Before we move on from our weather app, let's look at one other important concept around PyPI, packaging, PIP, and this whole external package management for Python. Remember, we could see what was installed by saying PIP3 list. And over here we have various things like Stripe 1.28.0 for credit card processing. And we have pigments for web apps. Now, what do you do when you have more than one application you want to run on your machine? And they both use Stripe, but the Stripe API had a breaking change from 1.26 to 1.28. And one of the apps is written to use the 2.6 API, and one of your apps is using the 2.8 API. What do you do? Do you just reinstall and uninstall and push the versions backwards and forwards? Like, how do you deal with that version difference, right? You can't run both apps on your machine at the same time without continuously reconfiguring your machine. Also, if I was going to give my app to somebody, deploy it to production, give it to a user, maybe it runs on their machine, how would I know what I need? In this list, what is in this list is required to run the weather app? Well, you and I know because we just wrote it. We know that requests is needed and up at the top, BS4 is needed. But there's nothing here that, that makes it clear what is needed. Now, there's ways to do that with packaging and packaging up your apps in, in certain ways, but the environment itself does not help us here. So we have these two problems. Uh, different apps may use different versions of the same package, and it's very hard to tell what's needed to run a particular app. Another problem is if I want to install something here, I may need to run this as admin. Also, not the best. So there's a way to solve this problem, and there's a external package that will solve it for all versions of Python. There's a built-in version in Python 3 that only works in Python 3 called vimp. And I'll go ahead and show you the way that works uniformly across all the different versions. So there's something called virtual env that is built to address this problem. Let's see how we can use virtual env to create a special dedicated environment completely isolated from the general machine just for this weather app and its packages. I made a folder called Python environments. Let's go in there and see right now it's empty. So I'm gonna use virtual env to actually create an environment. So one question you might wanna ask is which virtual env do you have? We have the one from Python 3. So you wanna make sure you run that one. In this case, we can just type virtual env as a program. If you wanna run the other one, you might have to run it as a module and through Python directly. So something like Python 3-m space virtual env. Like so. But we don't have to do this. We can just type virtual env. All right, so what we're going to do now is we want to tell virtual env, go and create a clean, empty Python environment, Python 3, for us to work with. So we'll say virtual env, and then we just give it a folder name. So let's call this weather, py3. Just to make it really obvious, this is for the weather app, and it's Python 3. You can see that it's copied the Python 3 executable over, and it's also set up pip, set up tools, and a few other things. So now if I look, there should be this folder. If I type correctly, <laughs> there'll be this folder. So we can go in there and look, and there's a bin folder. So let's go into this bin. Well, before I go into the bin, let me ask the question, which Python 3 would I get if I run it? And let's ask pip3 list. Oh, there's all the stuff that's in the main machine. Okay, so let's look in here. If we go into bin, you'll see that there's an activate what we're going to do is we're going to run this activate and we want to run it against the current shell so we'll say dot to source activated this isn't necessary in windows the dot it doesn't work i don't believe we'll see this now watch the command prompt change now you see it says weather three and if i go somewhere else you see now i know that i have my python 3 weather environment as the active python environment so if i ask questions like which python oh now all of a sudden i've got the one running out of there regardless of where i am and if i say pip list well, we just have an empty system. Now, the version that got installed into our little virtual environment is out of date. Let's just not worry about that for now. Okay, so we can actually use this to run our app. So let's go over to where we wrote our weather app. We'll say CD and this. And we look in here, we can see there's our program. That looks familiar, right? This is our little weather app, great. But if we try to run it, we say Python 3. Well, we don't need to say Python 3 now. There's only one Python in this virtual environment. And we give it our program. There's going to be a problem. It says, hmm, this concept of request as a module, this doesn't mean anything to me. There's no module named request because in this environment, we have nothing. 
we just have this clean environment here. So let's quickly install what we need. We know we need requests and we need beautiful soup four. And we can install them both at the same time like this. If we don't forget to put the install command in there. Excellent. Now, if we ask pip list, you'll see we have request, beautiful soup and nothing else. Kind of getting tired of this. So let's just run it. So we have something nice and clean. So now if we list, you can see we just have beautiful soup requests and the three foundational bits. Okay, so again, let's try to run this. We'll say Python and we'll give it the program. Oh, look, it's running. All right, 97201. Perfect, the temperature in Portland, Oregon is 7.4 degrees Celsius and it's partly cloudy. How awesome is that? So it doesn't matter if somebody else installs requests or beautiful soup on this machine and they have a different version or they update it, we are 100% isolated and just have this working version of Python here, this clean version of Python 3 in our own user profile in this folder that we created. So the last thing to do is use this in PyCharm. So we're over here in PyCharm, and if you see when I run it, that we're still running out of the main Python 3.5. And when I go to the project interpreter, you can see that's the one we have selected here. And we have, again, all the stuff that we saw in pip list. We can actually go over here and select one. If I hit show all, it lets you have this little management thing. Here's an old one I can clean up. And I can add, I can say add local, or I could even create a virtual environment. That whole process you just saw me do with virtual ENV, creating the stuff and, and all that, you just click this button and it'll actually do that for you. So that's super nice. But what I'm gonna do is add the one that we just created. So we can just browse over here to our environment and it loads up and we just pick Python. Perfect, so now we have this. We can actually select this to be the project interpreter for the current project. And now look what's in here. You can see it's just that clean environment. So let's go over here at okay. Takes a moment for it to uh, update and index the environment. Now it's ready to run. Now look at this. User screencaster Python environments, weather Py3 bin Python. So now we're using again from PyCharm that isolated clean environment. Very, very nice. And let's just check one final time what the weather is in. Let's say 92118. Beautiful. The temperature in lovely Coronado, California is 15.2 degrees Celsius and mostly cloudy. Hey, where's the sun, San Diego? Anyway, this is working using our environment, using our packages that we've installed from PyPI, using PIP into that environment. Lovely. So that brings this application to a close. I hope you've learned a lot and had a lot of fun doing it. I want to just reiterate one more time. Remember, you should try to use APIs and verify the usage rights when you're doing screen scraping, but it is a really cool way to get data into your app.